Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy and today I'm doing my top solo games 11 through 20. This is a follow-up to my top 10 best solo games video that was wildly popular, wildly popular for my channel anyway. So I thought there might be some interest in hearing what my next 10 favorite solo games were. So that's what this is. It's is gonna be a quick video, not quite as involved as the last one. And the great thing about this list is a lot of these games have been featured on the channel with full playthroughs. So you can go check those out if you wanna learn more. As always, let's just dive right in. Number 20 is Hit Z Road. Now there is no one on the planet who has this game in their top 20 favorite solo games. This is one of those aberrations. It's one of those games, I'm, I'm sure you guys have that one game where you just can't justify how much you love it. It doesn't make any sense and yet here you are. And that's this one for me. Guilty Pleasure, I guess you could call it. Uh, I just, I love this game and I shouldn't. And it shouldn't work solo and I, I just I just love it. It's a weird one in a Martin Wallace game. It's zombie survival, but with a brutal auction system. And in solo, obviously you don't have that auction system. You have a, a different sort of card drafting system where you can you can pay more to go down a scene path or or pay less resources to go down sort of a hidden path. So it's got a little extra press your luck added to the solo. But this is a game with wild swings of luck, rolling dice to kill zombies. And in the multiplayer game, it has all this stuff that I don't like. Player elimination, uh, you know, rich get richer, <laughs> brutal auction, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, it's just, it's one of those games that I shouldn't like, but it all just sort of comes together in a very thematic way. And when you play solo, none of that stuff really matters. You're just sort of along for this rather quick kind of lucky, push your luck, resource management, just a fun little ride. And the production on this thing is really cool. I don't know, I, I can't recommend checking this one out because I think it's just me. I don't know, I love it. So <laughs> that's number 20 hit zero. Number 19 is Cartographer's Heroes. I think I've said it before, I'm not a huge fan of rolling rights, flipping rights or whatever. Yeah, it's just not a genre that I, that I care for. I know some people are crazy about it and there's so many way too many of these games i have too many in my collection <laughs> you know it just you just sort of you just sort of happen you just get them uh i think this is my favorite it's certainly my favorite to play solo i think and it's definitely on the more complicated uh, roll and write side there's some super simple ones where you're just rolling dice and writing down numbers and i tend to not really play those this one has a lot of the fun of drawing and creating a little map and trying to score different areas and things like that. And I like that. And I like what the Heroes expansion or the standalone expansion brings to it. Adds a little bit extra. I like the different maps with the slightly different rules. It just adds a little bit more replayability. Again, I did a full playthrough of this one, so you can check that out. Yeah, it's just a, a, a fun... Good, simple game, very relaxing game to play like late at night. I tend to play solo games late at night when I want something more relaxing. And so something like this definitely appeals uh, to me for that. So anyway, that is number 19, Cartographer's Heroes. Number 18 is The Bloody Inn. And again, I've done a full solo playthrough of this one, so you can check that out. In fact, on that video, I played through it twice. I love the dark humor of this one, the theme, the artwork. There's very few games that have this kind of sensibility. And so it's nice to have a little bit of grotesque theme that's treated in more of a comedic, you know, lighthearted kind of way. That's fun. But just the gameplay here is incredible. This idea of, you know, having to spin cards to play cards. We've seen that before and many different things. But the idea that certain cards are, you know, good at certain actions. So you don't have to discard those. You can use it and then take it back into your hand. So trying to be efficient with collecting cards and then using them to take actions and then being able to keep them, that's really cool. And I would really like to see that. I can't remember seeing that anywhere else. I'd love to see that in, in, a, in a bigger game. It's, this is a really cool mechanism. I also like the timing of having to sort of, you know, you're collecting money and then you have to, to reset the money, right? You can only hold so much, so you have to, you know, cash in at certain times. So it creates this sort of timing issue. You have to be careful of having bodies laying around unburied because the police might come in and overwhelm you. There's, there's a lot of fun little ideas here and it works really great as a little solo game, very quick, very easy. 
and a great game to play on Halloween. So there you go. That is 18 Bloody Inn. Number 17 is Sprawlopolis. And I've also done a full playthrough. You're seeing it here. In fact, it's such a quick playthrough and such a quick playing game that I might go through the entire playthrough while I'm describing it here. I think that playthrough is all of five minutes. So you should go check that one out. But yeah, this is a little micro game, right? You have 18 cards, I think. Three of them taken at random, which will give you some sort of scoring condition that you have to meet. The other ones you're building out a city trying to connect the roads. You don't want to have too many roads going on because those lose you points. You're trying to get things next to other things by placing them next to or covering up certain cards. Incredible amount of replayability for just 18 cards. Incredibly clever. And, and again, one of those things where I am not a fan of micro games at all, but this is one of the best. This and Love Letter are kind of um, the pinnacles for me uh, of that genre. Terrific little quick playing cheap game. Number 17, Sprawlopolis. Number 16 is Bullet Heart. And again, I've done a full playthrough of this one. That's the all five of these so far. I've done playthroughs on my channel. So you can check out everything you need to know in those. Yeah, but this is a really great, I, I feel maybe overlooked game that, that plays radically differently solo than it does you know, in as a multiplayer game. And, and multiplayer is this real time, really fun kind of crazy thing where you're passing uh, um, these tokens over to other players and trying to, you know, get them to fill up their board. In solo, it's this nice, chill, relaxed experience where you're just trying to form these patterns in order to take out these things that are falling, hoping not to get overwhelmed. It's supposed to simulate like bullet hell style games, but it really just, as a solo game, it just falls into this nice, like spatial puzzle and i really enjoy it it's, it's got a fun theme tons of replayability in there yeah just a just a great little game you should you should actually really check this one out because i do feel like it's maybe been overlooked and uh it's it's definitely one that i would recommend number 16 bullet heart number 15 is my favorite pandemic game it's pandemic iberia I like playing co-op solo. That's, I mean, if you look at the list overall, not so much in this one, but overall I enjoy co-ops and I enjoy playing co-op solo. This little twist on Pandemic, it, it's my favorite. I like keeping Pandemic relatively simple, not adding a bunch of expansions and all this uh, other stuff. And here you just have this little twist with the water. You can drop the water to in areas to try to take care of infections that might be popping up. And then the idea of, of patients moving around uh, and having to deal with that. Also the train line that you're building to like slowly over the game to improve your mobility around the board. It's all very thematic. I like the little added touch of strategy there. It's not overwhelming the game. It's not making it feel like something other than pandemic. It's still nice and simple and clean, but just with a little twist that I think is fun. And just thematically, I really like the look of the board and the historical time period. It just all works so much better for me than any of the other pandemics, you know, base game or the you know different experiments uh, that we've seen through the system. So yeah, this is one that continues to hit the table for solo play. That is number 15, Pandemic Iberia. Number 14 is a bit of a cheat, and it's the entire Oniverse series of games. Uh, you could put Nautilion in here. That's the one that I've done a playthrough for and is probably my favorite. Uh, a little uh, twist on a uh, roll and move style game. But uh, I want to call out all four that I've played. Nautilion, Arion, Oniram, and Sylveon, maybe is how you pronounce all those. Those four are the ones that I've played. I enjoy all four of them. All great solo games. In fact, I'd only ever play these solo. Each is fun and unique. There's a lot of variety in those different games. I find each one to be very fascinating. None of them are too long or too complicated. And there's always a lot of uh, variety in the box, a lot of different modules and stuff that you can add to change the experience, make it more complicated or easier, longer, harder, just chock full of interesting ideas. And I enjoy the, the weird universe uh, <laughs> that uh, is presented in these games. So there you go. 14, a little cheap the the Oniverse series of games. Number 13, I think you could call a classic, and that's Friday. 
Yeah, this was one of the first solo games that I played. I can't remember if it was this one or Coffee Roasters. Even to this day, this is one of the most clever deck building games uh, that exist. The idea that you're doing these challenges and if you can overcome the card, then you get to keep it and it becomes a card in your hand that lets you do something, simulating you learning and gaining experience and getting better at survival. Super clever, but even more clever is the strategy here where you have to manage your health and you have to learn when to not succeed, when to stop pushing and to admit failure and move on, when to sacrifice your health uh, in order to get that card that's really going to help you. It's extremely clever and difficult. I struggle with this game so much. I find it incredibly difficult. Not figured it out in, in any way, shape, or form. But man, I remember going on a train trip and playing the heck out of this game. And it's amazing that it still feels so fresh even today. So there you go. Nice little solo package in a small box there. Number 13, Friday. Number 12 is actually the first playthrough on my channel. It's Lost Expedition. I chose it as my first because I really didn't even know if I could do this video stuff. I had no experience. So it was more of just a test. And it's like, oh, this is a nice little simple game to test if we can even make these videos and, and, and make it work. Yeah, I love this card game. It's so simple and yet constantly exciting and interesting. The two different phases, the morning and the evening phase, and the different way that you lay out those cards... It's a neat puzzle, and it's got that survival exploration uh, theme that I like so much, uh, that I find so fun. Gorgeous artwork, nice giant cards there. It's, um, it's an incredibly fun game with very difficult decisions. I'm, I always find myself sort of grinding over, over the decisions in this game and, and having a great time. And it's just so quick and easy to play, you know. Uh, that is something that I like in solo games. Maybe because I am I mostly play solo games at night and I'm, you know, want something a little on the more simple side, something a little more relaxing, and, and this fits that bill perfectly. So there you go. Number 12, Lost Expedition. And now for something completely different, my number 11 is This War of Mine. It's hard in two minutes to really articulate just how profound this game is. On the side of the box it says, in war, not everyone is a soldier. And that really encapsulates what this game is about. You play a victim of war, just trying to survive, just trying to make it through. Right now, This War of Mine is tragically relevant with Russia's attack and war on Ukraine. But it's also important to remember that this theme is relevant all the time, unfortunately. Somewhere in the world, always there are innocent people living through the horrors of war, the horrors that this game tries to present to us, tries and succeeds. This isn't a fun experience. This isn't like a fun game to play. Rather, the experience feels meaningful. And that's what keeps me coming back to the game. It's important and, and meaningful to meditate on the horrors that people are experiencing and think about what we can do to prevent these, these things from happening. You know, make no mistake, this is, this is a long game and it's so difficult. I, I, I don't know how to win this game. <laughs> this, is, this is my Robinson Crusoe. Uh, the game is brutal, uh, but that's the point. Uh, you know, I think more than almost any game, the point here isn't to quote unquote win or, you know, it's it's about the journey and the experience and reflecting on the horrors of war. And I can't think of another board game that puts you in this place uh, and makes you feel what this game feels. So, yeah, for me, this is a special one. My number 11, This War of Mine. And there you go, 10 more great solo games that I totally recommend checking out. And I've done playthroughs for about half of these, so check that out if you want to see them in action. And if you haven't checked out the, my top 10 solo games, click on the video here and, and get 10 more games that are even better than these. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye!